This is why I walked out of my job. I walked out of a seven-figure contract because I said, I don't want to be part of, of a corrupt cabal. I don't want to be part of pushing propaganda. And uh, actually, I've never told this story. I don't, I don't even know if I should tell it. Should I tell that story? The only shocking, surprising, stunning thing about this is that Carrie Lake is revealing it and telling us about it. Yesterday, we told you the bizarro story out of Arizona where Carrie Lake had secretly recorded a bribe offer from the chairman of the Republican Party of that state of Arizona. And uh, well, since we told you about that story, uh, Mr. DeWitt, the chairman of the Republican Party, who's caught on tape offering a bribe for Carrie Lake to get out of politics, uh, he has resigned his position in a, a rambling letter where he accused Kerry Lake of secretly recording him, violating their friendship, and uh, a whole lot of other stuff there. Uh, ultimately, Kerry Lake wins this round, and Mr. DeWitt's political career, at least for now, is over in the state of Arizona. But the story gets even stranger. Last night, Kerry Lake went live. You saw the video at Town Hall. Uh, it's still there if you want to watch it. It's a phenomenal question and answer there about who was behind this bribery and also what else may have happened behind the scenes to try to keep Carrie Lake down. And during that video, she revealed something else. It looks like it looks like there was another bribe attempt here to keep Carrie Lake out of politics here. Watch this part of the video. We can't have that kind of corruption happening in Washington, D.C. And frankly, it starts in Washington, T in, in D.C., and it moves down into capitals across the country, into the state houses, into the municipalities. And uh, what happens is people run for office and immediately they get bribed, they get blackmailed, and they become controllable. And this is what's wrong with our country. Got another question? I got another one. Was this the first time that something like this has happened to you? Oh, boy. I don't even want to answer this because when I got into politics, it became so corrupt. I mean, I worked in media. The media is um, really corrupt right now. They're pushing propaganda. This is why I walked out of my job. I walked out of a seven-figure contract because I said, I don't want to be part of, of a corrupt cabal. I don't want to be part of pushing propaganda. And uh, actually, I've never told this story. I don't, I don't even know if I should tell it. Should I tell that story? Um, after we won the primary in the governor's race, there was a, an individual who'd been supportive of us, and we were really happy about it. And we asked him to be, become more involved in our campaign. We were really happy to have his support. He, had, he was a, a man who had been quite successful, and he wanted to start a PAC for us. He wanted to give some money to a PAC. For those of you who don't know, because I'm kind of new to politics as well, PACs will spend money running commercials for you and ads that will help propel your message or maybe expose what's going on with your opponents. And this individual was willing to put a million dollars into a PAC. And I said, that's wonderful. Thank you. We're, we're really happy. This is a grassroots campaign. If somebody has a means and they want to put they want to put money into uh, helping us get elected so we can save Arizona. We love it. And about a, 24 hours later, I got a, a, an email from this person who uh, put his asks. He put his asks and he said, well, you know, if I'm going to do that, I have some asks that I demand of you. And these asks were really outrageous. They were basically, <clears throat> you know, you can't be around MAGA type people. You can't support President Trump. You can't. Uh, support other MAGA c candidates. And listen, I wanted to get the whole slate elected and I wanted to bring our movement over to everybody who was running on the Republican ticket. I wanted everybody who was Republican to win. And so I said, I can't agree to those asks. And we literally um, said, thanks, but no thanks. And somebody who had been in politics for a while and who was on our campaign said to me, I've never seen anybody in the history of my time in politics who said no to a million dollars because they didn't want to do a few simple things. But I didn't think it was simple to say I'm willing to turn my back on President Trump. I'm willing to turn my back on other Republican candidates. I'm not willing to take somebody's money 
with a whole bunch of strings attached. So um, that was one example. There's been probably others that I can't think of right now. But when President Trump calls <clears throat> Washington, D.C. the swamp, it he truly means it. It is swampy, it's disgusting, and it's corrupt. And I want to, well, we just had a little, something dropped in my office here, and we want to change that. That is uh, stunning in many ways. I love the natural approach that Carrie Lake takes to this in communicating directly to you and going over the heads of the media and, and telling stories like this. The most remarkable takeaway that I've seen so far of, of specifically this part of the story is that no one, and I mean no one, and I mean not one person that I have seen reacting to this on social media in the comments section on the town hall YouTube uh, or anywhere else in real life when I talk to somebody in real life about this, not one person is shocked. Not one person is surprised. In fact, most people are looking at this and shrugging and saying, well, yeah, of course, we assume that happens. In fact, the only shocking, surprising, stunning thing about this is that Carrie Lake is revealing it and telling us about it. But is anybody out there surprised that, that there are huge, pocketed political operators who will go to a candidate and say, I've got $5 million that I will spend on your campaign's behalf. All you got to do is A, B, and C, and the money is yours. Of course that's happening. How many times do you see a politician suddenly, strangely, seem to take up a position that they didn't use to take up? Wow, I didn't expect that person to, to take up that issue. Why are they doing that? That doesn't seem in keeping with their values, with their principles, with the kind of thing that they used to support. You know, like, for instance, so I don't know, how about Joe Biden? How about President Joe Biden, who is now making the centerpiece of his political campaign to be reelected in 2024? the right to kill a baby in the womb. That's all you're going to hear from him. Oh, we need to restore Roe. We need uh, uh, reproductive rights and freedom for women. We need uh, women's health choices to be protected. Oh, whatever euphemism you want. That's what he's going to be running on. But in 1982, Joe Biden actually voted as a United States senator to overturn Roe v. Wade. So what changed? You know, maybe it's me, but an issue like abortion seems to be one of those things where, you know, when you're a fully grown adult, as Joe Biden was back in the 80s, I mean, gosh, what, he was in his 40s then, right? <laughs> uh, you'd think that you've reached a point in your life, in your maturity, in your relationship with your faith. I don't know if you know this or not, but Joe Biden is a deeply devout Catholic. Uh, that's kind of the thing that you you believe what you believe, and nothing's going to change your belief system. But here he is on the polar opposite of that issue. Why? Why? Well, I mean, he did get to be president of the United States with a whole lot of money and a whole lot of political power and support from certain interest groups. And they walked through, the, I guarantee you, they walked through the door and said, Joe, you can be president. Here's all you got to do. And so he did it. And so he did it. Carrie Lake just laid out exactly how this happens and how it works. And it's why you see Republicans who run on one set of ideas, and then once they get to Washington, suddenly they don't do it. And as we explored earlier today, the border crisis that we're seeing down in Texas, it really resonates, doesn't it? Because if you're a Republican voter, like I am, you've spent the last multiple decades hearing politicians at the national level say, we're going to shut down that border and we're going to end illegal immigration. I've been hearing it for decades. Every single candidate who has run for president, whether it was George Bush or Bob Dole or George Bush again, <laughs> the other George Bush, and then Mitt Romney and John McCain. They all said the same thing. And yet every time they had the power to do something about it, they ignored it. It wasn't until Donald Trump where they actually had a president, a Republican, who did what he said he was going to do. 
And it's one of the reasons why Donald Trump is so popular with Republican voters. It's also one of the reasons, like Carrie Lake, that Donald Trump is very unpopular with the power structure in Washington, D.C.